Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys and today what I've got coming up for you is a video once again on Bartomeu, our current president. There's been a lot surrounding him in the past few days and I wanted to do this video because I just want to highlight the consistent and persistent bad planning and preparation from this board. We're paying fees for players who shouldn't be at Barcelona in the first place, are given long contracts and we're signing them in the latter years of their career. This has been something now that I've felt very strongly about for a number of years right back to the summer of 2014 and we've seen that continue right up until this summer now highlighted by the signing of Paulinho. So I'm going to be going through nine different players. I'm going to be looking at a lot of things from the fee that we've paid for them, how much they actually cost us per league game with that fee taken into account, any fee that we've potentially sold them for and also looking into how much these guys are getting per week for doing very very little. So we're going to start with Douglas who was signed in the 2014 window. Of course, we've all heard about him, the transfer, the, the very murky circumstances that surrounded this one. It didn't help as well that he was actually signed at a time when Marco Asensio was available for an actual cheaper price. Asensio was available from Mallorca at the time for 3.5 million euros. We basically said to Mallorca, look, we'll pay in instalments. We won't give you the full amount right now. In that time that we were dawdling, we paid the 4 million euros for Douglas and Mallorca said, no thanks. Real Madrid paid them the full fee. We lost out on Asensio because we signed Douglas from Brazil, who, like you can see here, has made three appearances for Barcelona in La Liga for his €4 million Euro transfer fee, meaning that he has actually cost us €1.33 every time that he stepped on the pitch in La Liga. And just to t topple all of that, he was actually earning, and still is at the club, he's still there right now, €40,000 per week. It's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot get my head around this one. It was a very strange signing right from the beginning. It was a, it was a relatively small fee, but like I say, when you put in comparison the whole Asensio situation, this becomes a very bad transfer on so many different levels. And still, we're yet to shift him. It looks likely that we'll let Douglas go to Benfica this summer, and he will likely leave for free. The next player that we come on to is somebody who actually contributed, he did, to, to be fair to him, contribute in the treble winning season, Jeremy Machu. But onwards from that, he was quite a liability at the back, he wasn't quite what we needed, he wasn't the standard required at Barca. But to be fair to him, he did go on to make 62 appearances. He was not convincing in all of those, don't get me wrong, but he is actually on this list and he's one of those who at least did contribute some time on the pitch. But in saying that, we did let him go for free this summer after originally paying 20 million euros for his services and the real shocking thing about this one for me is if you look at his weekly wage 95,000 euros the entire time that he was at the club that is absolutely ridiculous that we're paying that that much for a player who is quite average if we're being perfectly honest that's more than the likes of Marcelo earns at Real Madrid the likes of Isco earns that is more than those players and that is why our wage bill is such a growing concern under the current board we're paying very very average players a lot of money and we're putting them on long contracts and that is why we agreed to sell Mathieu for free this summer to Sporting because we were simply happy to get him off the wage bill and that is happening far far too often under this current board. We're buying players for very high fees, they're at the latter stages of their career and then when they're no use to us, when they're on too many wages, they're happy to stay at the club because they're fantastically paid, they've got fantastic circumstances, the city of Barcelona of course, the club itself, they don't want to go so we've got no option but to let them go for nearly nothing and we are not benefiting from that whatsoever. Another player that joined in that famous summer of 2014 was Thomas Vermaelen. Again, another very, very poor signing. Before he even signed, we knew for a fact they had injury problems. At Arsenal, he was their club captain. He hardly ever appeared for them in his latter years there due to injury problems and there was actually reports that he actually failed his medical at Barcelona before we agreed to sign him but we still went through with the deal which if it's true... That is, again, absolutely ridiculous. He cost us 19 million euros back in 2014, and in that time, due to injuries, and he spent a loan away from the club as well, he has made just 11 La Liga appearances, meaning that he actually cost us a whopping 1.72 million euros every time he stepped on the pitch for us in La Liga. He was paid a more modest 60,000 euros a week, but that is still a lot of money for somebody who's hardly been on the pitch. He spent most of his time either away from the club on loan, of course, 
course, when a player leaves on loan, it's never really disclosed whether we pay all of their wages or just some of it. Knowing us, we probably cut ourselves a bad deal with Roma, and we ended up still paying the Marlins wages, or a lot of them, even when he wasn't at the club. And the problem for us is, once again, he's still here. We haven't managed to shift him. He's still earning the big wages. He's once again injured, and there's nothing that we can do about it. We're trying to sell him back to the Premier League, but so far, unsuccessfully. Clubs like Everton, you know, clubs like West Brom, they want medical assurances before they take the risk on Vermaelen, which, believe me, is something we should have done before we signed him ourselves. And then to the summer of 2015, of course, that was when the transfer ban was in place for us. The players that signed were unable to play for about six months before they made their official debuts. And one of the first players that came in was Arda Turan. And this is one of the biggest deals on this list, really. 34 million euros was paid to Atletico Madrid, also with the possibility of 7 million euros in add-ons, meaning this deal could reach a whopping 41 million euros. And at the time, you could sort of understand it, but later on, it became very, very clear what happened. Bartomeu, of course, at that time, in that summer period, was running for president of Barcelona, and he wanted a big signing, or at least a big name, a recognised name, so that the Sochis would go ahead and vote for him and make him president once again. And that's exactly what happened. He brought Arda Turan in simply to sort of gauge a little bit of excitement in the summer with what much was happening at all. And in the end, we've ended up paying the price. Arda Turan is a recognised name in La Liga, of course. He was at Atletico Madrid, and he was a very solid player there it has to be said, but he is not fitted into Barcelona, and the investment that we made in him is looking very, very silly indeed now, and very overpriced. And once again, you look at his weekly wages, €95,000, and I'll repeat myself again, he's still here. We are struggling to shift Arda Turan as well. We're trying to sell him, or at least loan him uh, out to a few clubs. Galatasaray have showed some interest. If he goes there, though, all we'll get is £2.5 for a one-year loan, and when he comes back, we'll be in the same situation, struggling to shift him and getting no money back from him at all after that colossal transfer fee from Atletico Madrid. He's made just 36 La Liga appearances in his time here, making it at about 1 million euros per game because we don't know how many add-ons have been activated in that transfer. Another player that joined in that window was Alex Vidal. He joined from Sevilla. Now, not everybody on this list is a complete failure. You know, there are players on here that can grow, that can improve, but Alex Vidal was one that was brought in to initially to replace Dani Alves when he left, and that just didn't happen. Of course, last season, he was very, very unlucky with the injury that he suffered when he was hitting a run of form, but as we saw in the last Clasico, it doesn't seem like Alex Vidal could be a starter here. He doesn't look like the quality that we would need to have in that right-back role. He was exposed defensively. He showed very, very very poor positioning and he didn't quite have what it took to really perform in a big game and the problem for us was he we paid around 17 million euros for this guy he was not cheap he joined Sevilla for 3 million euros from Almeria just one year before we signed him and Sevilla made a profit of about 15 million euros in just one season we bought Vidal he hasn't really settled here massively he could go on to be a decent signing but I think it's again another example of us overpaying for somebody when there were better alternatives or even alternatives in the B team itself. You think about Palencia, possibly players that you could promote instead of spending this money. He's actually made 15 appearances in La Liga for us so far in his career, costing around 1.13 million per league game, and he is on a weekly wage of 65,000 euros. And now we move into the window of last summer, 2016, when a number of young players were brought into the club for very big money, it has to be said. And we started that with Lucas Digne. He came in from PSG. We paid around 16.5 million for his services, although that fee could rise to 20 million if a number of bonuses are met. And he was another one, really, who very much struggled to break into the team under Luis Enrique last season and hasn't really overwhelmed, you know, when he when he's played. He hasn't really put down a big statement. He's a decent enough signing. And I mean, once again, you could say, why not look to La Masia? There was a guy there, you know, Grimaldo, of course, went to Benfica. Why not look into the B team before you go out and spend about 15, 20 million euros on players? The players are there. The pool of players is there to choose from. But the board always seemed dependent on going out and making a signing instead of building from within.
promoting our values. They do not do that. He's only made 17 appearances in the league, meaning once again it's around 1 million euro per match that he's played, and he himself is on around 60,000 euros per week. And this is the very big money signing from last window, Andre Gomez. He came in from Valencia, and like I say, not everybody on this list is a complete disaster. There are players on this list who are young enough to still improve and prove their worth at Barcelona, but right now, looking at this signing of Andre Gomez, he's very, very expensive, and and is yet to prove that to us. He endured a very, very difficult start last season. We signed him for 35 million euros up front to Valencia, and a possible 25 million could follow if a number of bonuses are met. So in the end, he could have cost us around 55 million euros. He's made 30 appearances in the league in this time, meaning he's cost over 1 million per game so far, and he himself is on 90,000 a week, which is a pretty high wage for Andre Gomez. We're certainly hoping to see more from him in the coming season, although it was reported that the club are actually looking to offload Gomez this summer with Juventus interested. And it's very, very interesting that the board would spend so much money on a player like this and then possibly not have the faith in him and look to offload him the very next summer, which no doubt would have been at a very, very cut price. It'll be interesting to see what Andre Gomez can produce in the current season, whether he can live up to this hype, you know, this quality that we need him to be for that massive fee that we've paid Valencia for his services. Another man on the list would be Paco Alcacer. 30 million euros fee paid. Now, Alcacer is a player that I personally don't mind. I think he could definitely be of use to us. He was brought in relatively as a backup to MSN, and my problem really isn't with him. It's just the signing in general. We signed him as a backup to MSN, yet still paid a massive 30 million euros for his services. He made 20 appearances in La Liga, costing around 1.5 million per appearance in the league so far, and he as well is on very high wages. 95,000 euros per week is spent on Alcacer's wages, and and he's somebody that could definitely come into the team and make a difference. You know, he saw him score in the Copa del Rey final. He, he certainly lacked a bit of confidence when he came, but that seemed to grow as his career has produced. And hopefully he can actually grow and become the striker we need him to be. And his confidence can rise as he gets more comfortable with his surroundings. But it was a sort of last gap sign him. It seemed like we were sort of reaching. We were, we were panicking a little bit. It looked like we were, we were reaching a little bit, like we were panicking at the end of the window to bring somebody in to sort of replace MSN when they needed rotation. And of course now we've lost Neymar and 30 million euros was spent on Alcacer at the time and it didn't really look like it was merited. Right now he hasn't really paid that back, but of course he is still young enough to turn it around. But right now it still does look like Andre Gomez, a pretty high price to pay for somebody who hasn't given us a great deal. The final player that I would look at in this team is no other than Paulinho. And that is where all this is confirmed. The board's short-term planning, their poor decision-making, and their very, very questionable recruitment policy. They have signed Paulinho for 40 million euros from Chinese club Guangzhou Evergrande when John Surrey, who's a controlling midfielder, was available for exactly the same price, but we still pursued 29-year-old Paulinho. Yet another player coming in in the latter years of their career. He's going to be on 95,000 euros. He's got a very long contract, and once again, it's short-sighted, it's poor planning, and I just don't understand at all why we've signed Paulinho. Even though people will say, you know, he could be a decent player. It's not just that. It's the fact we don't even need his profile. He's not somebody that we can use in our midfield. He's somebody who's quite a combative midfielder, quite a powerhouse in that midfield. That is not Barcelona. That's not who we are. That's not our philosophy. We desperately needed a controller. So I've got absolutely no idea why the board have splashed out on Paulinho. And I've added them to the list because because there's no question that this signing will go down in years to come as a failure. Paulinho will be here, and I guarantee in a few years' time, we will be left with him. We'll be trying to ship him out, but it'll be like Arda Turan, it'll be like Vermaelen, it'll be like Machu. Where in the end, we'll probably have to let him go for free. He's on massive wages, and he won't be of use to the squad for many years at all, if he even plays, that is. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys. What I thought I would do is do this video for you. I know a lot of people have been thinking more about the board and their decisions, and I just want to give you a bit more detail on that because I think that the campaign against Bartomeu has been outstanding. We're going to do it once again tonight at half time in the Real Madrid and we are all going to get on with the hashtag Bartomeu Demita Ya. Bartomeu resign now. That's our message. It's loud and clear. And also the board actually made some comments earlier on. They basically said that the Bartomeu campaign, the fans that want him out, they said that these were exactly the club's words. They said that that was coming from fans in Saudi Arabia, in France and in America 
America and other countries, not Spain. They basically implied that if you're not a fan of Barcelona in the country that Barcelona is, Spain, then it, your opinion does not matter. And I thought that was an absolutely disgraceful comment from the club. It was released on behalf of the board. The board are obviously giving the messages. They don't want people to think that Bartomeu is wanted out of his position. Well, you know what? He is. It's not just us outside of Spain. People in Spain, socies, are wising up. That's what this video is intended to do, to show the poor signings, the poor management of money, and the poor planning from the board in the years gone by. We will get our message across loud and clear. At halftime, guys, make sure you are tweeting Bartomeu de Mitella. We want him out now, and we will not rest until he's gone. Leave your thoughts down below. I will see you very, very soon. But until then, as always, Vasca! Ela Barça!